Sorry. Can you please join me in the Asian Pinkin Pledge? What are we trying to do? Change the world. I can't hear you. Change the world. How do we change the world? Thank you. <laughs> Asian Pinkett Agenda, June 7, 2019. Leaders call meeting to order. Mr. Kirov, introduction. Mary, activities. Thomas, impact. Mary, why do this? Nari, how to do this? Seven, I mean, Q&A. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much uh, for inviting us here today. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics predicts that by the year 2020, 77% of all jobs will require at least some technology skills. Schools have their work cut out for them. A lack of access to technology while young can translate into not being able to find a job when working age because that person will not have the necessary skills. The technology landscape has changed an awful lot since a lot of us were kids, like these guys. For instance, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, 89% of all American households have high-speed internet. Well, great, that, that's almost everyone, but like with many other things, that's not evenly distributed. According to the Pew Research Center, only 56% of low-income households have a computer, and only 53% have high-speed internet. Here's the correlation. If you can't afford it, you're less likely to have it. Now, I've been working with Hmong schools and working in the Hmong community for the last 10 years. So I've gotten to be somewhat familiar with that, that particular community. The Hmong population in Minnesota per capita is the largest Hmong population of any state in the United States. And if we're taking a look at them, 28% of Hmong households live in poverty versus 15% of all U.S. households. And again, a lack of tech in Hmong homes, like in any other home, is likely to be because they can't afford it. Of course, we want kids to use tech at school. But no school in America has unlimited funds to meet these needs. These are pretty daunting problems. But what if I told you that there is a solution that is doable? scalable and affordable. What if I told you that the digital divide can be closed? What if I told you that students, instead of being recipients of the problem, can drive the solution? And what if I told you that the solution can fit in the palm of your hand? You guys are really familiar with these. This is a flash drive. This one holds Linux, the operating system that fuels what we do. As for all those questions I just asked, all of those things are true because we've been innovating with technology for the last eight years at Community School of Excellence, among charter school in St. Paul. Our student population is mostly Hmong and Kareni, with most of our students being refugees or children of refugees from Thailand, Laos, and Burma. Over 60% of our students qualify for, or, or receive English language learner services. Over 80% qualify for free or reduced price lunch. Now, on the surface, we look an awful lot like lots of schools and lots of communities. And we seem to be an unlikely place for a technology revolution to happen. We didn't try to start a revolution. We didn't start out to, to, to have one. We certainly didn't ask for one, but a revolution is what we got. You see, our school is home of the Asian Penguins, our school's computer club. The Asian Penguins 
are the first, and as of yet only, Linux users group based in a mom school anywhere in the world. And they are part of a unique experiment. The components of that experiment are really quite simple. Get open source software, get used computers, and have kids do all the work. The results of the experiment are in. This works. Having kids use Linux and open source software in school helps the kids, helps the school, and helps the community. It's how we do things. How did this begin? Back in 2011, our school launched a one-to-one -one laptop program and we ran into a lot of problems that any school that has a one-to-one -one program might run into. Kids breaking laptops, kids losing laptops, kids forgetting to charge their laptops, etc. To help overcome the lack of computers that I was starting to run into in my classroom, I reached out to a great nonprofit called Free Geek Twin Cities. Raise your hand if you've heard of Free Geek. Oh yeah, oh yeah. FreeGeek gave me free desktop computers that ran Linux rather than Windows. They use Linux for their work because Linux is open source. Free to get, free to use for any purpose, free to change and free to give away. Now I was already a Linux user so I thought that was pretty cool. Well, my students loved the computers. And a few kids started to come to my room after school to use them. From that, we started a club to learn about using Linux. They were all Asian. The mascot of Linux is a penguin. So we called the kids Asian penguins. Why use Linux at all? Well, there are a few reasons other than the obvious one that it's free. First, very few schools in the United States are using Linux. If you want to stand out, don't do what everyone else is doing. Um, using Linux at school gives our kids an opportunity that they will not get anywhere else. Now, schools are often more comfortable with following rather than leading. And in this case, we were being the leaders. But we think it's paid off. Another reason for using Linux is that while schools in America are not using Linux, it seems pretty much everyone else is. You all know this. Linux is everywhere. Okay? Linux runs the internet, Google, Facebook, Twitter, Android phones, self-driving cars, internet-connected crockpots, and the list goes on. If our kids decide to go into tech for a career, they will need to know something about using Linux. But the biggest reason for using Linux is that it gave us an affordable way to have our students become technology leaders. Our kids became what I like to call partners in the process. The Asian penguins were learning how to install the OS, configure the apps, uh, run software updates, change computer parts, and the computers they were working on would be used by other students. The kids who took part in this program could say, this is something we did. Starting in 2013, we took on what would eventually become our biggest project, our school's digital divide. We had a lot of students who didn't have computers in their homes. We took old computers and we made them run like new. We began taking computers to students' homes and eventually started welcoming families to pick up their computers at school. In fact, we have a few that are probably going to be picking some up this afternoon. The Asian Penguins grew into other activities and we attracted more students. We have had over 250 kids take part in this program and we've introduced hundreds more to Linux and open source software. And we still start each club meeting the same way. The meeting leader always a kid, will stand up and ask, what are we trying to do? The kids respond, change the world. Then the leader asks, how do you change the world? To which the kids respond, be crazy enough to think you can. 
All from a pretty simple idea. Get kids using free software and see what happens. I'm now going to let the kids take over and tell our story and explain how and why this idea can work elsewhere. But before I go, I want to thank you for coming to hear how we're trying to change the world. Again, thank you. back in the club at school, and that club uses Linux. But what does Linux club actually do? Quite a lot, to be honest. Let me tell you about it. We have meetings every Thursday and Friday morning. During club meetings, we discuss club business, vote on important topics, and have a team share about their work with the larger groups. In the large group meeting, we also have a hardware and software lesson. For software, we learn how to install and configure Linux in the apps. We also learn how to use them. A few months ago, we had a lesson where we learned how to use Linux to make ringtones for our phone. Hardware lesson can be something like switching a hard drive or adding a video card. Some of the learning can take place in a large group, but most of, most of the actual work happens in a small group. These teams meet during study hall or, or during lunch and work to get things done. That could be finishing computer for a kid to use, but it could also be cleaning a computer. Hey, that has happened too. That has to happen too. Once the computer are ready, some of them are kept at school. This year at CSE, almost all the, of the speaking portion of the assessed test was done on Linux. That mean that kid were taking a test on computer that were prepared for them by other kids. Other school are not doing this, but we are. Most of the computer, however, are given to families in need. We develop a thing called a penguin mission. This is a field trip where we deliver a computer to the home of a student. The team travel to a student home, set up the computer and teaches the family how to use it. Since many of our families do not speak English, we always need to bring a student who can translate into the family language, whether it is Hmong, Karen, or Karani. Each kid on this team has been on at least one mission. I've been on two. With any activity we do, we record it for other people to see. We always getting the camera out to get a picture and a video to share. These go on our YouTube channel. which have gotten over 20,000 views. We also have a Facebook page, a Twitter page, and a website, which is www.agentpenguins.org. Bring a computer into the school and sending them out the door takes money. At school event, we run a table where we sell snacks. We once did a fundraiser called Pennies for Penguins where teachers collect machines from their student in a yard on their desk. In one week, we raised over $1,000. The biggest fundraiser was called Operation Upgrade. The laptop card and Mr. Karoff room had computers that were old and broken. To put, to put it mildly, they sucked. The agent penguins did a crowdfunding campaign on the internet, completing with a video to get enough money to replace those laptop. Hi, Hi. we're coming we're to you coming from, to you from community, community School of Excellence in St. Paul, Paul, Minnesota. We are we the Asian 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 Asian. We're the Community Club here. Learn about computers, computers. Yes. Set up, set up computer, computer for other kids to use at school, school. We, do we do that. Give, 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 give,
We've like workshops, our conferences, and true teacher don't. We don't, we don't, we don't do it every day, but we've done it. Even said, computers, 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 Here's the deal. We want to replace our old laptops in our middle school. And we were wondering if you would help make it happen. I'm Stu Karoff, and I'm a teacher here at Community School of Excellence. I'm also the faculty advisor for the Asian Penguins. Out there. We're working, We're working to close, to close the, digital the digital divide in our students' homes, homes by refurbishing, by refurbishing and, donating and donating Linux computers, computers to our students' families. families. Almost, Almost all, all of our students, students qualify for free or reduced-price reduced lunch, lunch, and many, and many are, refugees are refugees from Southeast, from Southeast Asia. Asia. Here at, Here at school, school, we have an aging set, set of laptops that have faced a lot of wear and tear and need to be replaced. Charter schools often struggle with resources. The Asian, the Asian penguins, penguins want to solve, want to solve this, problem this problem themselves. themselves. Well, by well, using laptops, laptops and Asian, Asian penguins, penguins will install the software. software. That, way, that we'll way, we'll learn, learn serve, serve others, others, and keep costs cost down. down. We want to we fill, want to this, fill cart this cart with 30, with 30 laptops, laptops that are, that are fast, fast enough for student work and powerful, powerful enough for kids to develop 21st century tech skills. How much would this cost cost? Our goal is four thousand five hundred dollars. This is the this biggest, biggest and craziest, craziest thing we have ever done. ever done. Crazy? Crazy. We, do that. we do that. We need we lots, lots of people, people to help. To help. Well, well, you, you, you be, one, be one, of one of them. Thank you Thank very much for the CSC Asian 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 Even better than we planned. We raised enough money to upgrade one cart, and someone gave us enough laptops to upgrade another one. Almost immediately, hundreds of our of kids at school were all using Linux. Yes, we did that. Over time, people outside our school wanted to hear what we had to say about using open source software. We went out to talk to them. In the last five years, the Agent Penguin have taken part in. 12 different conferences and a big event, including this one. Our message is almost always the same. You can change the world if you're crazy enough to think you can. We just use Linux to do the, to do it. Of course, you know what they, what they say about all work and no play. Every spring, we have an end of the year party with game and a cake. Software, hardware, media, fundraising, special event, helping people, and a really cool cake. These are some of the things we do in Asia Penguin. Thank you. Or as we say in Karini, degree. Hi, my name is Thomas. In our world, there is an impact of our decision like a robber, for an instance. He or she steals something, and the impact on, on him or her, if they ever get caught, is jail. One thing is true. When we make a decision, we have an impact on ourselves or on everyone. But you can say the same thing about school stuff as well. When we come up with a new idea, a new program, a new invention or innovation, how do we judge if these stuff work? The Asian Penguin was our impact in our school, and it has been around for a long time. Community School of Excellence. It is our belief in our in the club that we look that we at three ways how we have helped our students and families how we have assisted our teachers and school, and how we have influenced the world outside our school. One of the main reasons for our creation was because of schoolwork. 
student couldn't do any work at home because of no technology for online school work. What do kids who get computers from us think of this? Well, we went and asked them. Edward said, the computers were good. I use I used it to do my math and other homework. I use IXL at home, and I like to watch videos and play games too. So I stated, it works out very well for me. I do my homework and IXL on it. Sometimes my brother will play games on it, but it's mostly for my work. This impact is not just felt by kids who have received computers, but it has also been felt by kids in the club. Here is what they had to say. Sheng Ying told us, being in the Asian Pink One has been very interesting. When I first joined, I thought it was just a club, but it was more than that. It became a family. Maximus, who, who was a conference speaker two years ago, he said, I like to give away computers to children who need them. It is fun to learn about open source software and Linux. And the Asian Penguin gave me opportunities to do things I would never have done otherwise. The impact of the Asian Penguin has been felt by the school and its teacher for a long time too. We used to provide the main laptop carts with Linux computers for our teachers to check out for their classes. While we don't do that anymore, we still provide teachers, we still provide teachers with, com wait, we still provide computers for our school to do standardized testing and others. <coughs> what do the teachers think of all this? Well, we went and asked some. Here's what they said. Liana of Damage told us the Asian Penguin has given some students bo a boost of confidence. Asian Penguin has made students realize that yes, we can. And Gerdor stated the Asian Penguin not only meeting technology needs for families without computers, they are also teaching us how to dream bigger and live better. Over time, people outside of CSE started getting interested in the Asian Penguin kids using Linux at school and how it was a worth it, it was worth spreading. And on occasion, we have been asked for help by people in other places. During last school year, the Rice Street Rec Center needed a computer for their drop-in homework program. So we went over there and gave them one. In February, the St. Paul Public, Public Library wanted to start a new tech program for their after-school kids. So they reached out to us and we sent a team to the library to teach their kids how to install Linux and get, go and get it going. A high school student named Christopher Hearn at Oak Mountain High School in Alabama decided his school needed a Linux club, so he reached out to us for help. With a little advice, he got his club up and running at his school. Another impact we had on an organization much more bigger than us was the open source software interactive, inter, interactive call. Uh, curriculum called Floss Desktop for kids to help for kids to help kids learn about open source software. Its author Patrick Madison credits the Asian Penguin with inspiration. His organization to publish this curriculum we didn't write it but apparently we inspired it and we use it. Another impact that Asian Penguin has, has had is the cause of diversity. While other schools, while our school is mostly Hmong, 
it has a more diverse student population than you think. And these students didn't always get along. The Asian Penguin gave a variety of students an opportunity to work together and get to know each other. We help, we, we help to bring different kinds of kids together. It all started with a couple of Hmong students who noticed there weren't any Karani kids in the club. We started to reach out to the Karani students to invite them to join. The outreach never really stopped. Since then, we had kids that are Hmong, Karani, Karen, African American, and Hispanic. We welcome them all. Also, let's not forget that the Asian Penguin has been modeling to the Southeast Asian community. That girls have a place in Tech 2. Since 2013, this club has been about 50% girls. We have girls who have been club officers, mission leaders, interpreters, and presenters at conference, like Nari over there. As a result of our work, we have even won a few awards. We have received the Minnesota Association of Character School Innovation Award, the Sustainable St. Paul Award, and the Minnesota E-Learning Summit Award. Kids have learned new skills and have had fun doing it. Families have been helped with computers they couldn't afford to buy for themselves. Organizations have benefited from our actions. As a result of what we tried to do, we tried to make an impact, a good impact. Thank you for listening. talk about what the Asian vegan do and how we change our school. But I didn't mention one of my favorite things. When you're in the Asian Penguin, every once in a while you get to skip class. <laughs> just like that. Of course to get permission to miss out on class and go do Linux stuff means that we had to convince the leaders of the school that what we do is a good idea today. That's my job. I mean to do that sometimes, we have to persuade people. Today is my job to persuade you. You heard me take care of Mary and Thomas talk about the activities of the Penguin and how we have impact our school with Linux. I would like to give you some reason why you should start a Linux club at a school near you. <coughs> some of you might ask, why does a school need something like that? or even say that kind of thing is not for me. I am here to say that any school can do this and your local school might just be waiting for you to be a leader. Why should any school start a Linux club? Let's talk about some. First, Linux is free. That means it's free to get, free to use, and free to change, and free to give away. This is called complete software freedom. No school have an unlimited supply of money. And in place to save money on tech, Linux is a great way to do it. Since Linux works great on old computers, a school can get by just fine using Linux. Rather than buying all new stuff, let me give you an example. Mr. Kara's computer is used and it works on Linux and it was free. You can put computers in front of kids the same way. <coughs> Linux works great on old computers. In fact, you can bring old computers back to life. That not only save money, but it reduce e-waste. Last time I checked, this country produced too much e-waste. <laughs> Kids learn in the Linux club. Kids are learning how to do all of this. They learn how to install software, fix computers, update, upgrade computers, and also the other skills. And these skills are in-demand skills. But according to the 2018, Open source job reports from the Linux Foundation. 83% of hiring managers said open source talent was important to them, and 87% of them said it was 
hard to find qualified help. And if you get one this job, prepare to have lots of money to stay paid great. This is a cheap program to have. All the software are free. And if you're using old computers, you know how to pay a lot for them. Something else to keep in mind, people like to help kids. When they hear you're running a club that have kids you sell on the computer, they will give you old computers. Many of the computers we give away were given to us by people who didn't want them, but didn't want to help kids. And when you fundraise for a club like this, people and foundation like to give you money to support it. We got in thousands of dollars from people who want to see us learn and succeed. You get to help people. If your school doesn't need computers, lots of your school family probably do. And have kids use Linux to restore computers, give you a supply of PCs, and that can do some good people lives. Since we started the Asian Premium, we have given over 240 computers to kids. And when you give a computer to a kid, you also help your family too. But this computer can also help your school. The Asian Premium keep a part of the computers to ourselves, but we loan them to the school and use for testing. We just got there with the spring testing. Some of the kids in at our school use our Linux computer for these tests. There are also organizations in your city or in other places that need computers and can't afford them. We given a Linux computer to a community center, a public library, and our sister school in Thailand. Doing this was cheap and then make a big difference. It's fun. That should be enough reason for anybody. And don't forget when you take a computer to someone else, that means you're not in class. <laughs> As you can see, there are lots of reasons why our schools should start in this club. It's affordable, kids learn and have fun, and it make a difference. What you do with this knowledge is up to you, but it's my hope that you join us in changing the world with Linux. Thank you, or we say for many, they agree. Hello and my name is Nari Tao. Before we go any further, can we get a round of applause for the rest of the team? <laughs> Over the last several years, we have shared our stories in person and on the internet. And we have convinced a lot of people that we are doing something cool and special. And unfortunately for most of those people, that's where it ends. Their reaction is, what happens at your school is great, but we can never do it at my school. Well, I'm here to tell you that such statements weren't true when we started in 2012, and they aren't true now. Community School of Excellence did, in fact, do something special by starting Linux Club, but this is something that any school can do, and this could include a school near you. As Thomas mentioned, others are already taking the idea of kids using Linux at school and making it their own. The question is not, why does CSE use Linux? The question is not even, why don't other schools? The question is, what's stopping you from getting involved? If you feel like what I'm saying does not apply to you, or that you are not the right person for this, just listen and see if this makes sense to you. We've come up with a few ideas to help people get started with Linux wherever they are. A school, a community center, a library, a church, a temple, Wherever is fine. If Mary did his job and persuaded you, and you're willing to consider using open source with the students, here are some of, the, some of the things you need to get started. A supervisor. You will need someone to be in charge of the project, and it is not necessary to be an expert. You just have to be willing to learn something new. Remember our friend Mr. Krop over there? When he started the Asian Penguins, he was a social studies teacher. He, did, he didn't even have a tech job. Other people have started the same way. And so can you. Computers. If you're going to have a kids computer club, you will need to have computers for kids to use. Luckily, Linux runs very well on old computers, so it doesn't need to be a new or expensive machine. The Asian Penguins use all recycled computers, which we either buy cheaply or get for free. 
and take it from us. If you're getting the word out that your kids are recycling computers, people will give you computers. Software. Your computers will need an operating system and apps. If you're using Linux, then you're getting software for free. What's more, if you want to have your kids recycle computers with Linux and give them away, the open source software licenses allow you to do that as much as you want. In fact, the people who wrote these programs want you to give them away. Kids. Kids using Linux is the whole point of having a Linux club. Having the kids learning new stuff keeps it fun, and we found out once you get going. The kids' enthusiasm becomes contagious and their friends come in too. You will probably not have a shortage of kids who want to do this. Space and time. If you're going to have a Linux club at school, that club will need a place to meet and to keep its stuff, and club activities will have to fit into the schedule. For both things, a good thing to keep in mind is to keep is to work with your administrators and be flexible. And remember, they will probably be pretty excited about the idea and will want to support it if they can. If you're not sure about how to start, a resource that can be helpful is the Floss Desktop for Kids Curriculum by the Open Source Initiative. This curriculum splits le the learning into several different lessons, and most of them taking about an hour each. This curriculum is used by about 10 schools and organizations around the country, with more to come. Another resource is the Linux Club Guide, written by our very own Mr. Stu Carroll. The guide gives a lot of helpful suggestions about how to start a Linux club and what you should do once you've started it. It's available online at www.linuxclubguide.com. So how should you get started? The first tip is to start small. Try Linux yourself, choose the version you wish to work with, and put it on a computer. Learn the layout, learn the layout of the desktop and what apps you wish to use. We recommend Ubuntu, but there are many versions to choose from. Talk to your administrators about starting a new club. It's the kind of thing they'd like to hear. If you are an administrator, talk to your teachers to see if someone wants to take this on. Recruit kids. Kids love tech and will get excited about doing something new with Recruit kids. Kids love tech and we get excited about doing something new with computers. That has been our experience everywhere we have gone. Get computers. This is easier than you think. Remember, they don't have to be new and fancy. Many people and even some businesses will want to give you computers for your club. Your school might have some they don't need anymore. And there are plenty of places to get them cheaply. Check to see if your state has a surplus exchange where they sell computers that the government doesn't need anymore. And there are thrift stores, your local free geek, and eBay. We have gotten computers from all of these sources, so can you. Do software and hardware lessons. Use stuff from the curriculum, tips you see online, or simply make something up. There is nothing wrong with learning right alongside your kids. Remember, if you really screw something up and the computer doesn't work anymore, just grab the install drive and start it over. With free software, you're free to do that as often as you want to. Our biggest project became closing our school's digital divide, and this year, we had a lot of success with that. Maybe that is what your school needs. After a little bit of trial and error, we found out what works. Get computers, have kids recycle computers, and give computers away. It works. And this isn't about just having fun anymore. This is about making a difference. Do you want to change the world? Start by being crazy enough to think you can. Thank you very much. Okay, um, this is kind of traditional for us in that um, we, we always end with the Q&A. So, does anyone have a question for any or all of us? Uh, Matthew here has a microphone if anybody wants to ask a question. Yes. All right. Matthew will wind his way over there. 
I only saw a PO box on the uh, website for donation. Is there a PayPal address? Um, we we haven't had one in the past, but that's something that we might be looking at in the near future. Okay. Yeah. Um. Any? Please. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious about once you hand the uh, computers over. Has there been any any? Uh, does do you have to work with the people you hand them to to get them used to using well, either a computer for the first time or Linux, or has that transition? Um, it's smooth enough that the, that works on its own. How does that? Process? It's smoother than you think, actually. Um, if if you with the kids, if we're telling them to start working on an Ubuntu computer, um, they're already using a few other environments at school anyway. If they go to the computer lab, they're using Windows Seven. If they're in their classrooms, they're using Chrome OS. So. They're already you know, learning how to swim in different waters, as you might, as you might say. Um, for the adults, this is the first thing that, they're, that they've ever seen, and so there's a bit more of a learning curve. But that's why when we drop off the computer, we try to make sure that the, uh, that the computer, uh, that we actually walk them through all the steps of, of how to use it and what programs we have and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm not sure what happened with that uh, that connection, so I'm just going to skip up to where our contact information is too. But um, what other questions do we have? Oh, you please. Talk, you talked about that you can uh, use computers. How do people get those to you? And is there any specific kind? I mean, I have friends that say they have old boat anchors and stuff in their homes. And That's a legitimate question. Um, most of the time, when people are donating computers to us. Um, they'll contact the school and then make uh, arrangements to drop them off. And I can't tell you how many times I've, I've had the experience where I'm in my office or I'm, I'm working with some other teachers or whatever in the building and all of a sudden I get the, on my walkie-talkie, I get the page and say, Mr. Karoff, there's somebody here with a computer. It's like, okay, all right, um, I'll go down to the atrium and pick it up. Now, we do advise that there are some minimum ex uh, specs that we will accept. We will not accept single core computers anymore. Uh, they're simply too old to really be of use to us. Um, we will work with core two duos or greater, but even if you're using that as your cutoff point, that's a machine that's 10 years old. You know, so we find that, that we can get lots of stuff like that. More recently, we've been seeing more i3s and i5s coming in, or the AMD equivalents, and those have been working out really great for us. Um, but people just, you know, bring them to the school. And it's best if they let us know that they're coming, but uh, yeah. What other questions? So you mentioned a uh, large number of the households might not have internet access, or at least not high-speed access, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming you're delivering the computers with um, maybe a standard set of software so that people can start to get used to it, and then maybe uh, introducing them to a way that they can use a thumb drive to expand the things that they have as they discover more? Well, we, we do have a standardized set of apps that we set, so every computer that we send out has exactly the same setup, and all of these kids have gotten really good at, at doing that. Um, as far as the, as far as internet, um, we, it's been our experience that if you can get that initial stumbling block out of the way of having to get the computer, if you can eliminate that cost, then people are more willing to look at, well, how much is the internet going to cost me? Now, Comcast and CenturyLink both have discount programs for, uh, specifically for low-income people. So that family can get the internet for as little as $9.95 a month with no setup fee. Uh, we have a wonderful guy back at our school who's our Kareni liaison. He's the guy that deals with all of our Kareni families. And for a while, and this was really cool because Comcast doesn't have anybody that speaks Kareni. He would actually, on the family's behalf, like do a three-way call to help get their accounts set up. And there were times when we would drive out to the family's home to drop off that computer, and Comcast had just been there the day before, and all we had to do was plug it in. And, and that was really cool. So most families that we found that if you can eliminate that initial cost, that they don't have to think, oh my goodness, I don't have $300 that I can go and spend at Best Buy. Well, you don't have to. 
Can you come up with $10? And most of them will say, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, and so um, when we give the computer, generally the family will get the internet. Still, what else? Would it be uh, accurate to say that because most of the computers you're delivering to are uh, families that have a student at the school, mm -hmm. so that if they do All have questions, yeah. the student could then find another kid that's part of the Asian Penguins if they get stuck or that kind of thing. So in a sense, they have tech support once you've delivered it? That is correct. Uh, and if a kid has a problem with a computer, they either come back to school and ask me or they'll ask one of the kids that's in the club. Yeah, that happens a lot. Yes? How can we, how can we as local individuals help? Well, um, we, you know, it, it's our desire to see our club continue and prosper, but we also want to see, it's been, a, it's been our dream for years, to be able to pass the baton to the next school and say, you know, okay, join us. We, we want to see other kids learning Linux in other places. Every one of you lives in somebody's school district. Every one of you lives near a charter school. They're all over the place, in the metro in particular. Um, if you have kids in the school, Talk about volunteering to start a Linux club at your kid's school. If you don't have kids at all, talk to the local school and say, I've got an idea, maybe I can do something through your after school program. That would be really cool. We're looking for people to network with. I would love to be able to take my kids over to another school just to give the kids a chance to hang out. That would be really great. Um, so, donating computers would be great, donating money would be great, but also getting involved yourself. That would be great too. Okay, I'm aware of the time. Our next session started in five minutes, but we'll take one more question. I have a question for the students. I'd be curious awesome. to know from you guys, um, aside from occasionally getting to miss class, what is your favorite thing to do with your computer club? What's your favorite thing? I like using the terminal window and just get like putting codes in. <laughs> I like fixing and cleaning the computers. I like a wearer that shows me what to do. I just like that I skip the class. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so for me, um, something I like to do is just observe and see what's wrong with the terminal window or you know something that's wrong with the app store and yeah, that's basically it. One thing I like is uh, testing the games. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Alright, these guys, this is actually their last day of school, but they still came here. So let's give them one more round of applause. Thank you guys so much for coming.